Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In the previous video we discovered that I needed a docking hub on the Lunar Gateway and so I decided to use USI parts for that. Uh, we've got the Tundra airlock at the top, we've got the docking hub, and I've got my own custom water recycler based on numbers from the ISS. Uh, this is a supply module that we have there, uh, plus some additional fuel to finish docking and everything. But we also have a Briz stage in order to capture around the moon and help with rendezvous. And then we've got the Vulcan rocket, the Soviet Vulcan rocket. Uh, this is for all eight boosters, not just Energia. Uh, it really is too tall for that launch platform. And yeah, overwhelming power. So there goes its ginormity. And here go the boosters. Yep, off they go. And with the core even, we have too much fuel here. It could carry a much heavier load than what it is right now. We've got ample margins in all phases of this trip. Uh, the fairings though, they are a problem. Yeah, they don't separate particularly well with this mod, but it's okay. We are safe. We carried the fairings into orbit for a reason. Well, uh, yeah, I, I guess we did leave them in orbit, didn't we? Whoops. Anyway, but uh, yeah. We carry them all the way up for a reason. There's the Briz stage after our transfer. And and here we are doing a mid-course adjustment with the Briz. It's handy for that because of all of its ignitions. And then we capture around the moon. So we, we only need to capture loosely because we're rendezvousing with Lunar Gateway, which is in a very high orbit. And we want to leave our apoapsis high so that we can correct our inclination if there's a difference. And there is a minor difference between us and the Lunar Gateway, so we will have to... Well, I mean, it's not that big a deal, to be honest. It's, I think this uh, 7.4 meters per second will do the trick. Okay, but it takes a long time to rendezvous with Lunar Gateway, so we had other things to do. Uh, this is a Uranus supply mission that we're doing an ion burn with, and so we need to take care of that while the new module was on its way to Lunar Gateway trouble with really high orbits you have to get to them at a particular time we with this mission are passing by Jupiter in order to get to Uranus so we had to manage that Jupiter approach properly and here we are finally rendezvousing with the Lunar Gateway after doing that correction with the interplanetary mission so yep unfortunately on this docking hub i put a whole bunch of those cx aerospace docking ports that i was actually irritated by i don't know why i didn't just go straight for all of the regular docking ports instead of the cx aerospace rotationally dependent ones but here we are uh i will reg regret that decision later and we dock we have to move off that lander temporarily but the lander will redock to the docking hub here so yeah we just needed to separate it off so that we had room and of course the whole lunar gateway deal is looking ridiculous with starship dock to it but anyway uh here we go and docked all right well let's move this docking with one of those docking ports the bridge stage we had separated before and it deorbits so we managed to deal with that bit of space trash properly. Now the next bit doesn't have anything to do with solar system tourism per se, but during the live stream somebody suggested or joked about a rocket made out of Briz stages entirely, and I decided to make that happen. Now this would require a Briz stage with quite a lot of little Briz engines, which is what we have there, but also a whole bunch of the Briz uh, tanks with toroidal tanks uh, and two RD-253s which are the engines from the Proton rocket. Uh, they s s said using all Briz tanks, they didn't say just Briz engines after all. So this is just a test of this really ridiculous premise. Obviously the structural mass of this is annoying. Uh, its stress weight ratio is quite nice though, but uh, it looks like we have a fuel imbalance there. Um, it's likely that the RD-253s actually use a different fuel mixture or something is misconfigured. So we had problems, uh, aside from the fact that it's a ridiculous rocket. Uh, one of those problems was that Briz stage getting caught on that 
inner stage. That wasn't very helpful. And another problem was fuel crossfeed into the outer engines on this stage. So we were only able to light the center 5 and not the outer 12. So, yeah, it's not going to survive that. I tried to figure it out, but there was no hope. Basically, the only way to do it is to attach it to the center Briz tank instead of the toroidal one, I guess. I don't know what the deal was. So, we tried again for some reason, even though it's a ridiculous premise. Uh, and uh, here we go again. Well, I guess we did get pretty far into it, but technically this is cheating now because instead of having the Briz tanks as they are normally configured, uh, we rebalanced the fuels, which is not properly Brizzy. I guess you could say. So now the fuels are draining as they should. And we separate. And it's still sort of iffy there, but we do get all of the engines this time. That's a lot of Briz right there, ferrying set. And of course there's uh, another little Briz stage at the top there. We have three stages. Okay. And separation and ignition of the third stage, which is just a normal briz, no toroidal tank, actual verniers. And unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to apoapsis this for this stage. It, the briz stage is a very long stage, even without the toroidal tank. So it ended up re entering in the atmosphere at very high velocities, and everything blew up. So, anyway, no more of that experimentation. We have to take care of some Mercury missions. So we had launched two Mercury missions to try and bring uh, Arthur and Katak back. And so this is one of those, and this is the other one of those. And you can see Mercury there, so this is very much on approach now. Both of them are arriving at Mercury. This one was launched on the Monument rocket, and the other one was not, but also launched on a really big rocket. So uh, yeah, they're all pretty big. And this is trying to slow down. Unfortunately, we lost some of the radiators, so the remaining radiators are really, really glowing. And yeah, that was just to slow down a bit because otherwise we wouldn't have enough time to capture at periapsis. So after burning off all of that Delta V, we uh, did have enough time at periapsis, so we're waiting on that. And this is doing a similar burn here to slow down ahead of periapsis. And now the one launched on the Monument rocket is capturing around Mercury. Hopefully in such a way as to make it easy to rendezvous with other things. And this, for some reason, had to do a radial burn. I must have had a mistake with it or something like that. Not sure why this radial burn was necessary at all. And ultimately, because of that, its capture burn, which is what it's doing here, was late. And so, not the most efficient thing. It's, as you can see, running out of liquid methane there. So I don't know if this is a very useful thing to use to rescue Arthur, that other one. So the one launched on the Monument rocket took precedence. It still has plenty of Delta V. The downside with it is it has a lot of structural mass. It's got a huge reactor, very heavy reactor and electric generator. So. We don't really want to lug the, all that around, and I decided that maybe the best thing would be to rendezvous it with the old return vehicle and resupply that return vehicle. That also had Attila thrusters, but instead I accidentally rendezvoused with the wrong thing. Um, I'm I, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe I thought that this had some stuff to transfer to it, and that's why I visited this mission first. But in any case, this was a useless rendezvous. So. I proceeded to uh, bring this to the main station where Arthur and Katak are. And so that's this rendezvous being done. It also has the really large USI module at the top there in order to give them room. But that's not really necessary. They've been cooped up in the vessel that they're in for long enough. It'll be better to just use that to bring them back. So anyway, but before using that to bring them back, we've got the original return vessel here with the Attila thruster. So I decided to have that dock with the one launched on the Monument rocket and transfer the liquid methane across so that we can use the vessel with the smaller 
engine and the lighter engine. You can sort of see on the tails relative to each other how much smaller it is. It's like, you know, uh, half the diameter, which equates to uh, more than a factor of four less mass. We are not at the return window though, so instead of having Arthur and Katak uh, rendezvous with the vessel that will bring them back, I decide to have them rendezvous with the other mission that captured into orbit around Mercury, the one that doesn't have that much Delta V in it left, but does have plenty of supplies. So that's helpful. And also it has much less lag than Mercury Station does. So here we are docking the two together and they'll wait with this until the opportunity to return happens. So while we're waiting for that, some new tourists decided that they wanted to travel up to Skylab 2. And so I used my Lynx spacecraft and the Sajita rocket. Let's just ignore the fact that the vertical assembly structure decided to topple. So Nesmeria, Anonymous Pizza, and Milo all wanted to go to the Skylab, Skylab 2. And they paid with the in-stream currency struts, which they got by watching. And the Sajita rocket has five 1,000 kilonewton methane oxygen engines. They're gas generating engines. They're not particularly efficient in their sea level form. Uh, there is one of those engines on the upper stage, and this one is more efficient because of the extending vacuum nozzle. And there goes the launch escape system. This is a fairly conventional spacecraft, this Lynx spacecraft. It does have a methane oxygen service module. And in this case, that is underfueled. And we are making a correction with the second stage since we can. It has multiple ignitions. But after that, we let go of it. And on with the service module. We didn't really need to use that. Even if we under supply the service module, it has plenty of Delta V for rendezvous in low Earth orbit. Anyway, we do deorbit the second stage. And the rendezvous happens. So here we are docking with Skylab. The approach is fairly smooth. It's not a CX aerospace docking port. Rotation does not matter. And... And we've docked. So all is well. Our tourists get their intended trip. And I discover, however, that sending three more Kerbals up there will require more supplies, so we have to take that into account. Meanwhile, though, Raider Nick wanted to not be on Mir, because I believe he called it a death trap. So, uh, we have another station in orbit around the moon in a polar orbit, and that is the Salmaz station. So I decided to move it to a orbit that's closer to Mir's orbit. They're both polar-ish in... Uh, Orbits that are supposed to be okay in terms of the mass concentrations. So we send Raider Nick and a companion in the Soyuz. Well, it's a very modified Soyuz. It's got the KIS container and a Briz on the tail. Anyway, they use that to head over to the Almaz station, which was otherwise unoccupied. This does mean that we are going to have to resupply an extra station, which is a downside, but anyway, it was something to do. Now the problem is, what I didn't know was that this the probe on this Soyuz is not compatible with the Drogue side on the Almaz station. And so when I try to dock, they don't really... it doesn't happen. It ought to be compatible, but apparently not. So here we go, not realizing that this is not going to work. Yeah. So no luck on that, and therefore we'll have to EVA the two passengers in order to get them into the Amaz station. At least it does have a hatch there. And so Josen which is not a tourist Kerbal, it's just a randomly generated Kerbal. Heads into the Amaz. Raider Nick, uh, at my behest, attempts to redock and adjust the rotation, fill around with it to see if there's something weird going on. Is there any way that the two craft can fit 
And the answer is basically no. So we do have to have Raider Nick EVA out, head over to the Almaz, as we have here with Earth in the background. Nice sort of view. And in he goes. And the Soyuz, of course, needs to be disposed of. I think it has outlived its usefulness. Well, I, I forget if we dispose of it or if we just shove it off into a different orbit. I think we just ultimately bring it down. So now this Almaz station also needs some spacecraft to potentially bring them back. And we also need some supplies on Mir. So I decided to try to adapt uh, Gagayan, Gagayan spacecraft and attach a supply module to resupply Mir and then also attach itself to that Almaz station and launch it all on the ultimate collaborative SLS, which has Raptor 9 boosters, it's got the shuttle mice carrying the RS-25s, it's got the SLS body, the Blue Origin New Glenn upper stage, and now, even more ultimately collaborative, it's got the Gagayan spacecraft. So, yep, all the things, it's a hodgepodge of stuff but uh, plenty of margin you know again so a very relaxed thing for live stream need to have good margin on live streams there goes launch escape system though uh, I probably shouldn't have let go of those fairings because the spacecraft is sort of floaty like that yeah that's a little bit awkward I wouldn't say that that's a safe orbit for the shuttle mice to come back down from it's possible but it's not super safe Anyway, here we go with the transfer with the New Glenn upper stage. And we get to the moon, ditch the upper stage, and now we're on the service module with a lot of food, water, and oxygen as well that we intend to deliver. Note the claw at the top because I didn't want to bother about whether docking ports were going to be compatible. We we're just going to claw things. Though that does require us to potentially transfer crew through the claw, uh, which is not the ideal situation. The Gaian spacecraft here is not uh, configured with a hatch right now, so we won't be able to EVA somebody in. I don't think that Gaian spacecraft can be uh, EVA'd with. I'm not sure. But here we are transferring the supplies into Mir so that it has what it needs and then it heads out and you can see the current supply situation right there and making the burn to get to the Amaz station which again is now in a more compatible orbit thanks to the burn we did with it before and so we can move between the two stations not easily but it's not super hard and we use the claw to quote unquote dock so there we go we've got that on the station and it's still got some supplies so they're in good shape so next thing we needed to do was to remove uh, spent HTV basically it's food water and oxygen were depleted and get some more supplies onto this Skylab we're doing all this because we need to time warp to the window for the mercury re return home so that's what all this is about. So off goes the HTV, it disposes of itself, and we launch the new supplies on an Atlas V uh, with five boosters. So 551. And off it goes with its marvelous thrust to weight ratio. I'm not entirely sure what that thrust to weight ratio would do to all the supplies, uh, how mushy things would have gotten at this point, but. Uh, probably not that bad. After all, Atlas in general is a fairly, fairly gentle rocket compared to some of the others that we use. But off goes the huge fairings. I had underfueled the Centaur stage, and so I had to lock the stage to make sure the launch clamps did not refuel it. And so I was unlocking them there so that we can proceed. And the Centaur stage is a go. And we make orbit and release our HTV, which has no additional engines this time, though it doesn't have the unpressurized section. So it's just the pressurized section plus the propulsion module and the avionics module. So uh, foreshortened HTV there. 
makes it easier to deliver a larger quantity of supplies since we really don't need the unpressurized section. And here it is docking in the same place that the previous HTV did. And all is well with that. So now we can contrive to bring Arthur and Katak back. It is the Mercury window, we've time warped to it. Everything else is fine. So now they have to rendezvous with the actual return vessel. They were just with this as a standby situation uh, so that we weren't in quite so much lag. But it still seems pretty laggy taking a look at the numbers ticking. Uh, so yeah, they have to make that rendezvous, but that ultimately had to wait for a subsequent stream. Uh, we did do some ion engine burning, but yeah, because because it is ion engine burns, it took a while. And this story will continue. They have done things at Mercury. Can we bring them home? We have launched some serious rockets in order to do so, but the jury is still out. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.